Welcome to Dungeon Master 43. That we have gone back to headquarters for a lot of space from last time. And there's still no level up in sight that we get to see the architecture of a city bursting out before us. And that the ending of Parsifal is coming so closely to a halt that we look upon these simple crowds of people and these ginormous bridges that no one can survive on except for everyone that drives over it. They're actually quite safe that these are architecturally safe and sound. Quarters does not make ancient Greece any less more necessary for the student. <clears throat> and that necessities for the student are often thought about in ancient Greece, where all academia started, although academia is in Venice, Italy, and where's Leonardo da Vinci's home. Uh, this is actually a hallway, and it's a corridor with many pillars holding up each side, like in the biblical realm, that some of these sculptures had to do more with the Greek times than the times of the New Testament that was written in Greek. But enough of the history lesson. We've come to obey the gods and go further into the study of what ancient Greece was and is and will be again. That looks like a pretty cool burned CD. I'm not sure what it's saying is on it because I'm reading backwards and it doesn't make sense. But that we're back into the YouTube documentary dungeon. And there are things coming at us that look like threshold guardians and that they're holding their drums so close, so far away. And then it happens. The room fills with people and suddenly you're on a balloon ride over the whole village. But you come in closer and look at the map that's float away is not accidental because you're riding a broom backwards. That you're playing Quidditch on this level is just because you have to fly in close enough to see these arenas that are built before us that are regenerated by computers that are ancient Greece. There is the blue planet that we're on. Would it not rather be called Oceanus? And that we have so many oceans, more than there's land in the world, that the creatures that inhabit the sea are not just what we live for and what we die for. But really, we don't die for it anymore because only a soldier has the ability to die for his country and anyone else isn't trained enough, so they're putting themselves in harm's way. Okay, I'm giving you a total history lesson here, and all we need to know is that's what's left of Greece, and there's a lot of it, so what's left of it is more than we had bargained for was even there that we're looking quickly for reprieve, reprieve. And I see one here that takes me to a history lesson, but it's the history of the fall of the Roman Empire under Constantine and that I thought Constantine rebuilt the city and Thomas Aquinas wrote City of God based on the city that was built by Constantine. So we're going to find out by watching history documentaries and take that with us as a book into the dungeon further. That we're looking at curiosity is already why we're here. But this interesting assortment of like Netflix slabs are making me wonder how they all move in each different screens. If they move in each different screen that are showing a different movie that it's edited together in each screen is Totally one of the most amazing commercials I've seen in a while. This still on some kind of commercial plan isn't to say that this isn't the exact slide book that we were going to use for this dungeon master, or that we're totally getting into these characters that are changing on the wall and these cars driving and these Lego toys and these upside down astrophysics, and that it's all good in a conquest of. Constantinople is just sitting there waiting for it to dawn and these are nothing like 
what the title says is why I don't understand how this is the history of the Byzantium, and all we've seen is commercials for the French Revolution, which was on as soon as the Russian Revolution died off, which happened later, and we're very disappointed in that as well, that they've left the Earth and gone to outer space or something is fine by me. Now, this wasn't quite the droid I was looking for, but perhaps we could study these relics closely if we look at the Stonehenge locked up next to each other, that there's got to be an inference of another kind of picture that we can see upon, like here might be a conquest of Constantinople and they look like they're out hunting but also well, there's a real two birds with one stone that they're fading off and fading in to these rhythms and rhymes and but I'm not sure what game we're playing anymore or scene from a movie or what they're supposed to pose about the ancient Greek other than they were warriors and they fought for their cause and this music Parsifaldo Everyone knows Parsifal is Wagner, who is German. Don't forget about this part of the world, Constantinople, which used to run the whole Roman Empire right before it Safa caught fire and the whole place burned down, with Nero playing the fiddle, right? After appointing his host to Congress. Well, that you're watching the History Channel, you may as well know this isn't just the History Channel. This is the double, double underground history fan club, folks. The kind you can only find on, you guessed it, YouTube. And that YouTube freaking rocks ever since they made those rules that they can't do illegal movies anymore. Thank you, YouTube, for that. We didn't want there to be illegal movies on a site we were going to use, so we were happy that you got rid of the illegal stuff. And that. Most of the time you were trying to get rid of it anyway and it finally all came off and that day was a beautiful day for the world. But that we're actually in a conquest of our own. Our own to find the inner city walk of where we can go to plant our gold and that places are opening up for me and that the knights of the round are assembling and that there's going to be a long horse ride before we get to where we're going. But we called it a hitch up anyway. And there are these great armaments that are heaving forth in battle and going to face the moment of the day before them. This is interesting, Dungeon Master, because as I look at these shots, it's a compilation of these soldiers getting bigger and stronger as they're walking along, and it looks like they're just going to mow down Anybody on your path, what do you think, Dungeon Master? I had kind of the same uneasy feeling myself. That I went about it my own way was probably not a good idea, and that I feel just ridiculous about the whole event. But if you want to go back to Raja, you might as well go to Ramla, and then, so that you're bringing your bar of gold to this town is what I was saying, Dungeon Master. I mean, yeah, I, I talked to the Enchantress and she was like, well, if you want to go with me, then there is a price to pay. And I said immediately that a failure to communicate with me. And I didn't even explain why it was a failure to communicate with her. And that it was so raunchy to even have that happen that I just wrote it off and... Nothing would even happen again. Is that what you're going to say? Because all I've been doing is staring at this map and staring at this map. And the map hasn't changed. And that we're going backwards into the file to see what there is to see of Dungeon Master. That apparently we've struck a chord and there's been other voices honing their respect for the Dungeon Master game. And that right in the speck of it, we see a commercial. Oh, that's so dreadfully obvious that we can actually make money off of this. It's so unheard of. Get out of here. All right, so we're looking at these paintings, Dungeon Master. And I don't see which tile came first, but that, that map stall back there was rather problematic. And that this video doesn't really have much to do 
with the first bit of our topic, which was ancient Greek, but that Pope Innocent III was a character of great humility, not himself, but for his people. He humiliated them all. No, it, it, was, it wasn't his funny clothes or his scandaphorous high, uh, top hat. It was one of those things about him that made him shrink off the screen and all the rest of the bullets would come out typed up. And I don't know quite what was behind him in the stained glass, but there's something going on back there that we're going to have to look further into, but that was stalled at another screen really makes me need to smoke a cough. <coughs> All right, smarty pants, so there's no level up here. There's no level up over there. That we're looking at completely different maps. That you're on the right side of the screen when I need the tiles to move that way. Oh, it's a slideshow. Hello, Wonder. What does this have to do with Constantinople? Is this really how it fell? Is that Gertie the dinosaur down there? And why has this map stopped again? Well, we're going to have to cruise on down to a more edible situation with the orcs and elves and things that we see in Dungeon Master daily that you don't usually see in Dungeon Master coming. And when it comes to Dungeon Master, nothing is held back, not even that man over there that happens to be the Dark Lord and that happens to be Prince Harry and this is the ginormous skull boy and his little, uh, I don't know why he's called ginormous, but the nerd of the rings is not even the top of it. That we don't even have permission, except we just asked him for permission and they granted it. So we're okay. And YouTube Creators is all about getting us through with Parsifal headed somewhere. And that these men are playing remote into Zoom and the witch of Zoom comes forth to destroy the internet. And there is King Tut, who sits on his throne and bows before himself. He's so confused. And there's something else in this Dark Lord's oblivion that is before his dark soul. This very mount of the devil may cry, and that he's going to have to take a POV, a point of view. And I mean POV by point of view, and there's an arrow in his leg. Terrible dread. I had never thought about that, Gortho. I will have to think about that. Sauron? I don't like these names. Be abhorred? I'm not really bored, but I am abhorred by Sauron. Yes, he's the abhorrent one, actually, if they get it right. This map was so sketched out, not from the book's original map, right? Who, who likes the book's original map? Say yes. You do. Yes, I knew you were going to say yes, because the original map says from the guys of... Mordor to the depths of Green Valley to the, you know, it was spelled out better in the token that Liv Tyler will live forever as an elf and was probably in this video somehow in an image flashed by subconscious product placement in the mind that we're flying around this map rather freely for a couple of pictures to appear on the water. It looks like this level of tree has never been quite grown before and that they're going up the ramp to back up their eggs are glowing. The women's eggs are glowing. I don't know why they're holding them out, but they're glowing eggs and those women were definitely more modern than this guy is in his classic knight outfit. That you can only see his eyes and that he's swinging a sword somewhere is probably the case or maybe in a future life where he's still swinging a sword in the past because it caught up with the present but now we have several aloof pioneers getting into their stage and getting dressed and ready for the day's journey that this wing this batman wing was on the case of the silver chair and there's no face in the fire i swear and, and, oh, you mean Anthogothworth. Anthogothworth? Yeah, I go there all the time, dude. You face that dragon, dude. He doesn't really breathe fire. You don't have to worry about it. It's not on the internet. We're cool. 
Now that there is a witch queen traveling north, I didn't quite understand that. And is that a cat? How did the animation get so good for that scene that looked live shot? Only that cat looked hand drawn. Oh, look, it's Mithrum. Mithrum, how I've missed your many mantles of ministrations. Mithrum, that down this path. The journey goes on, and we will see tomorrow for what it is. And when we see tomorrow for what it is, we will stand at Tol Sarion, and we will tell the people, Tol and Garhoth, that this is the Isle of Werewolves. And if they want, you know, if they're so interested in being a werewolf, well, I know a werewolf, okay? Dungeon Master, you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Ah, I wish I didn't, though, sometimes. I don't know quite why I hired that cleric, that narrator cleric. Oh, he doesn't even have an accent, and everybody on Dungeon Master has to have an accent. There's my well world friend, and I'll tell him that you don't have an accent, and he was going to devour you anyway in Amphigleth. And there are the hero rewards cards that come out the other side of the deck and continue on in the fantasy journey, and there was much rejoicing. And here comes a limited style free pass. Oh, you're going to knock it off the tree? There comes Bird. All right, well, I'm going to float through the sky right here, and I haven't shaved for a while, so I was thinking about hitting up the shave. You know, what are you doing tonight? Are you having any fun? Because, like, my mouth just got really dry, and I think I need to brush my teeth. Well, this is simply just a manner of what we see in realms beyond the level of the ghost. That we'll never get down completely the way we got down that time. It's not because we can't get down completely, but just not the way we got down that time. I don't know what I can do to continue to embark on this dangerous dungeon that's full of textual lettering that's showing what they're saying and that the dungeon master's driving further in game 43 it's a round without a level up that we've gone barren like a wasteland without a level up or an elixir or any but there's been threshold guardians and that there may be here is not exactly the joke we were going for that suddenly i'm getting a bit afraid and this isn't exactly the the right cover for where we need to be that this on the other hand may take us somewhere that we've never been or never had dreamed of back in space dungeon master had to go out and get, oh i've heard of this wizards of the coast would be so proud that we found this and that there's absolute ruthlessness in this approach and that Star Wars is showing off something it's had forever and that's its scrolling titles are going fast and going furious up the banner that who was to say that other titles couldn't go that way but I think as we float along and as we see a drift to the program before us we go again to the actual cycle of the complete travels of Aragorn which is what we have to s decipher about our own warrior and whether here we go where this knight has battled and why does it seem like I read off a teleprompter if I really don't because I don't read off a teleprompter, even this one in front of me that's telling me what to say and just said, even in this one in front of me that's telling me what to say. And that just went by and so I said the phrase and we're back in Dungeon Master. We're going strong. This is not just the theory of how Lord of the Rings came about. This is the theory of all Simorellians, even ontology of Lord of the Rings, that the very first principle is set here that it says Nerd of the Rings makes me very terrified that we must get permission 
Oh, if he moves, it's granted. He did blink, so I think that's a movement. I guess I wish for this to work out as granted. Otherwise, we'll try it in another medium because the medium is with us tonight, the muse. The muse from the Odyssey, the muse from the Iliad, is with us in our company and has brought about this man, Aragorn, who has a brooch on right now. He's kind of cute in it. But these guys are definitely looking at each other like they don't know what's going to happen to the village. And that small villages get attacked during times of rebellion and war and dragon f flame and everything else that will destroy a building. That Lord of the Rings does munch down quite a few buildings and there are a lot of hobbits and whatnots and hoosers that are killed and maimed. I do think that it's a tragic loss of life to see so many hobbits die in those books. I don't want to tell you the ending, but basically everybody dies and loses a finger otherwise. So that this is entrenched in what we need to see for Dungeon Master. Let's hear it for Dungeon Master. This is what we want to be, up in the mountains with our character cards floating to the side. That this doesn't even look like a real place from Lord of the Rings, probably isn't and is somewhere else is so on my mind that this look he's giving is exactly the kind of thing that he would look like if he had just smoked a bowl. And she looks like he wants him to pass it and he looks like he just got the joint and he's going to pass it after he takes a rip and he passes it to Jeremy who has just spoken about how his eyebrows are fake and he loves having fake eyebrows now that there's an eagle character you have to look at in that frame before it disappears okay that there's a flag color over the brawny castle and the theater was opening that day oh send me not to your formal missions i will not go again against my will and that is okay because Really, I see him just kind of stuck in one place that she's emptiness to me because she has turned on the feelings of man. And that was a cool hair day, even cooler hair day. These chicks are rocking it out. What's this guy doing with this rod of justice? And who is this red cloud that suddenly looks animatronic and that she's not in the story? But is this Star Wars or Nerd of the Rings or Lord of the Rings? Nerd of the Rings, we need confirmation of your allowance. We need confirmation of your allowance. Nerd of the Rings got back to us just now. And, uh, a pigeon dropped a letter and it said, Nerd of the Rings is still exploring what they can do with our video version if captured by their camera onto their video version. What a giant trip of nightmare links that would be. That these are the cue cards to our clone cards that are taking us into the debriefing. Is not even channeling us enough to the vortex. We need to be on with the mediums to see what's happening. Even in Nerd of the Rings, permission granted. And that the knight stood there and of his diseased in flame hand that was about to curtail on the rosiest of customers why he had braided his hair and the other man had turned into David Bowie and was looking stealthily to the ground control of Major Tom and this is Tolkien explained and only this can explain Tolkien without the sound forget the sound we've got Parsifal I mean it's Wagner we can do the German thing on top of the Eastern mythology as so is Tolkien. Or maybe he was from Great Britain, but if he was, that's his punk band from Great Britain. And that's the Dark Lord in a very easier to wear costume that you don't really want to know why he's called the Dark Lord. Do you know? Okay, said no, say no. Yes, you said no, okay. This guy is looking through a globe and he's traveling so far. And he looks at Dungeon Master. And Dungeon Master comes in for a moment to convene with his cast and crew who are flying by night operations. 
through Thorngale we travel, and it will be the eagle of the star. That he will have it on his neck, he who is chosen of the prophecy, and a needed dwarf to Rohan, which is the first place we actually believe is in Lord of the Rings, and that the crowd begins to turn towards a city, a city so light and aghast with waves, and the wavelength flows across it like mortal man seeks his revenge upon the other man who has wronged him, if there is a wrong. Whereas no man has wronged a man, whereupon he cannot prove it that he has wronged a man. He has not wronged a man, but that dungeon master was to be betrayed by Saruman, was a total surprise to everyone, even though Christopher Lee always played vampire Dracula the rest of the time, or Count Dooku, they still didn't know Christopher Lee was the villain. That it was so shocking to find out Christopher Lee was the villain in all these movies that we couldn't see him as anything else after Lord of the Rings than Saruman and that he was a villain. I'm sorry it had to go down that way, Christopher Lee. You weren't always a villain in your movies, but you'll be remembered for that only. And we, we respect with Count Dooku's great allurement. Amen. Now we're back in Dungeon Master for just a few more dreadlocks of the things that I wanted to show you about this level we're on that we made quite a heat in our practice of run that we th went through in this Dungeon Master episode it doesn't imply that we wasted much time but that that was almost a level up catching that ship out of the Strait of Gibraltar into the Red Sea or the Mediterranean Sea as they see. This is actually uh, Mordor over here that they've already dropped a ring in the lava and now they're journeying back via barrels or something. And look at this. This is a view on the ship of something I can't say is in perspective bound. Theory of relativity, jihad out, that they're back in familiar maps, that these maps took time to draw, that they show the exact filament of where the water fills in a mint this repressed structure of the clay hut by the water. That they go back up the river is absurd because it was supposed to flush out the other way into the sea and that the characters are totally time traveling backwards leaves us just enough time to discuss one more thing. If you're listening to Parsifal right now, I just want you to know that it's a public domain version that it was von Karahan's conduction and that Wagner has never sounded so beautiful which this opera was towards the end of his career. That we hit a promotional is something Wagner would have never had to deal with except that the ring cycle was good at selling the rings on the side which were given out as wedding bands or for kids' toys and they came out of boxes of Cracker Jacks that Sauron and Saruman got all mixed up as to who was Christopher Lee, more to be explored. And that Christopher Lee got in the way of even filming the dungeon that we see now and are traveling around like we're transcendental meditationalists floating through the sky on a vortex of rides. We're having an out-of-body experience, yes? That she is noticing that she's been in this movie already and that we're towards the end. Well, we may be towards the end. But listen, one last thing. Yon hither will break forth the morn of thine sorrow, but gentleness arouse such a caress of faith that will always be given to the never entrapped soul of the body, that the peaceful mind will be given over to the great deals of raiments and goblets and chalices and apothecaries and things to fill your wine into a cup. Because when the man comes around, you're gonna wanna have a big blast of wine right before the shiznit goes down. And end of take me.